Right, Teleado champs, now this is the MacBook Pro 14, but guess what? Yes, Big Bertha is here. Yes, the big 16-inch, 32-core, 64-gig RAM, M1 Max. Yeah, nah, I don't think that's the only 16-inch thing at the moment, and maybe I might test out the notch and uh, knock the top off it, because let's face it, unless someone's watching, it doesn't really work, does it? So anyway, we're going to talk about this, the base model MacBook Pro 14. This is eight cores, and it has 14 GPU cores. So basically, it's missing two GPU cores and two CPU cores. And as you can see, I've got this prop here. We're reminiscing about the old days. This represents GPUs, and yeah, how much GPU do you need in your MacBook Pro 14 or 16? How much RAM do you need? And should you be upgrading this stuff? Is the base model performing enough, even with two less CPU cores? I think you're gonna be shocked and surprised. And make sure down there in the comments you tell me what you want tested on this MacBook Pro 16, because I will be comparing it to this and all the other PCs. So let me know down there what you want tested and give me a thumbs up. I gotta say, I'm blown away by the support you guys watching. You guys are just awesome, like killing it. And I thank every one of you for watching. Now, I'm not just gonna talk about video editing. I'm gonna talk about music production, 3D artists, you know, visual effects. So have a look at this. People go, why do you put RTX 3080 and 3090 in the title? What are you doing? So I just tested this. This is the base model in After Effects. Puget System Benchmark tested it today. So this has 16 gigs RAM. There you can see the specs right there. Okay, compared to a desktop. Okay, I'm not even joking. This is a desktop on the right here. This has a Ryzen 9 5900X, which is a 12 core CPU. It uses a ton of power, RTX. 3080 Ti, 64 gigabytes of memory. Which one of these is faster than After Effects? Would you believe it? According to this benchmark, well, it's the base model MacBook Pro. Yeah, beating out a desktop, right? And it's not like it's some fluke. Look at that RAM preview score. Higher render score. So I think just straight away, we can knock it on the head. You got the performance here in the base model, all right? So now have a look at this. This is 6K content here. So this is from a S1H camera. 4206K. We have one, two, three, four, five, six streams and two titles, and two titles with some sort of effects, right? Now, let me tell you if I put one of these in the PC laptop, RTX 3090, it doesn't matter what it is in Premiere Pro, if I just put one of these, put the LUD on, color grade it, it is going to struggle to play it back. One, singular, uno, six, with two titles in the menu there, I've got if it drops frames, it's going to stop. Okay, so let's see if we can play back that. This is 6K, remember? HEVC, really hard to play. Wolf, have a look at that. The titles, the animations, two titles. Plays it back, no problem, right? Now, if I add one more, it dies, right? It is RAM limited at the moment. We'll talk about the RAM in a sec. So 16 gigabytes RAM, I know it's using all the RAM because I've looked at it. And yes, that's because of the inbuilt encoders, like the Media Engine, the H.264 HEVC, and the ProRes encoders. But it really doesn't matter how the performance is there. The performance is there in the base model. You can get it done. Who's going to be using that much? I would use maybe one, two tracks, maybe a title here or there. Come on. But you still have to tailor things to yourself if you're using some B-RAW or, you know, 8K red footage. All right, you want to get the most powerful laptop, okay? But just for us enthusiasts, more than enough. It is performing enough. And even when it hits the RAM limit, it still performs. And that is the limit on this thing. And I'll have to see how much I can do on the 16 inch with all the, you know, the RAM I have on that one. But the thing is, maybe you want faster. Well, that's a reasonable thing to want. Maybe you want faster than this. I'll just show up some benchmarks here so you can compare the M1 Max just to give you a difference, you know, in terms of speed, CPU, etc. Of course, if you spec it up, you're going to get better performance, okay? But if this is comparing to desktops, okay, we're comparing it to desktops. The performance is there. It's everything you need. You do not need any more than this, especially for stuff that's optimized. I'm not joking when I say I use the M1, not the M1 Pro or Max, the M1 MacBook Pro. I use the eight gigabyte version for about four or five months editing my videos on YouTube. I kept things simple. I closed everything. I just used Final Cut. Didn't use too many tracks. No problems. 6K content, okay? Now, I wasn't doing heavy duty titles and stuff like that. Ideally, I would have had 16 gigs. That would have been a lot better, but still, I done it 
and I didn't have any issues really. And to be honest, any of the slowdowns I had, you know, I used to get that on the MacBook Pro 16 maxed out with 64 gigs as well. So, you know, there was no different in that regard. So when it comes to video editing, especially if you're using Apple stuff, and even if you're using Premiere Pro, it really doesn't matter. 16 gigs should be enough just for us sort of enthusiasts. If you're a pro, you're gonna deck it out anyway. So let's not worry about that. If you can afford 32 gigs, I would get it. Like that would be the first upgrade I'd do. I wouldn't be worried about the CPU or GPU it's performing enough it's performing like a desktop right in After Effects which is like wow but the first port of call would be to go to 32 gigs RAM because the thing is there's one thing that's a downside about this silicon on the package there it's your Robin Peter to pay Paul and what I mean by that is the CPU and the GPU share the same memory so it used to be separate right the GPU had its own memory the system and the CPU had its own RAM separate now that they're sharing RAM if the GPU wants it's eight gigs that's eight gigs that your cpu does not have or your system doesn't have okay now the thing about the ssds they're so super fast and apple make their own custom ssd controller and ssd and you can think of it like direct storage on windows 11 which actually hasn't come out yet or you could think of it like the consoles how they have the direct connect storage and basically it's not just for swap file and stuff like that it's actually to reduce io bottlenecks and what i mean by that is because apple make this all custom and it's a straight pipeline into that silicon. If the GPU wants something, it doesn't have to go to the CPU. It just gets it, right? So we're going to reduce the bottleneck significantly just by doing that sort of stuff. Same with the consoles do it. Direct storage is going to do it with Windows 11. It's not just loading fast or swap. And then it's good for swaps. So it virtually uses your SSD like RAM, sort of. It's slower than RAM, of course, but it still does use it like that. So at the end of the day, this is enough for pretty much anyone except for the most demanding pros. Music producers, John Sign, I'll put a link in the description. He does his DJ work, he does his music production, all his songs he makes on a MacBook Air. Yes, 16 gig MacBook Air. And he says it was better than the MacBook Pro 16 with 64 gigs. It's better for video editing, he reckons. Go watch his video and he reckons it's better for his DJ work and producing music. So if a MacBook Air can do it, music production, don't worry, the base model's good enough. The 3D visual artists and stuff like that. Okay, maybe you guys want to upgrade your RAM. Maybe you want to upgrade the GPU as well, but the performance is here, it's good enough. When it's matching desktops and like beating like my iMac and stuff like that, it's just, the performance is here, it's good enough. If you want faster, pay more and get the faster one. But this one is fast enough. That's all I really have to say about it. And maybe even the MacBook Air is fast enough to be perfectly frank for most people, if you had 16 gigs and even the M1 MacBook Pro. But yeah, you want to spend a bit more, get this because you get this gorgeous display. So anyway, stay tuned for more of my stuff. Make sure you sub up. Can't wait to hook into the 16 inch now. So yeah, give me some of your ideas down there in the comments. And by the way, gaming, forget about it. If you're thinking of gaming, do not buy this. Buy Windows or something. I know a lot of people want it. It's a nightmare. I've been using Crossover. I've been using Virtualization. No. It's not good for gaming, I don't care. You can get it to run, but it's janky as, and you really want to be a tinkerer or something like that. It's just a bad experience, unless you want to go cloud gaming or actually game games that are native to Mac OS. So put that to bed. If you're into gaming, AAA gaming, forget about it. Catch you in the next one, guys. Tally, ho.